Hey guys, and welcome to Colot. It's supposed to be an adventure game with horror elements. It covers the a disaster that claimed the lives of nine hikers in Russia, or, cl or mountain climbers, I think. And it's narrated by Sean Bean, and I read that much, and I'm like, alright, I'm already set, let's go. I'm sold. 56 years ago, Russia, the northern Ural Mountains. A group of nine students of the Ural Polytechnic Institute embarked upon a difficult winter expedition to reach the Ototan Mountain. Their journey seemed to progress according to plan. However, on the seventh day of their trip, the weather conditions worsened. They lost their orientation and were forced to set up a camp on the slope of the mountain called Kolat Siakl. It was their last stop. Three weeks later in Yekaterinburg, when their families received no word of their success, the first rescue expeditions were sent. On February 25th, 1959, an abandoned encampment was found. The tent was torn down and covered with snow, with all the group's belongings left inside. Further examination revealed it was cut from inside out. The surrounding footprints indicated the crew had fled the tent. They were barefooted. This suggests a frantic escape, characteristic of people scared out of their wits. Two sets of prints led to a forested area down the slope. The rescue team found an improvised fireplace and two bodies. They were lying in but their underwear, with cuts and scratches to their limbs, suggesting they had tried to climb the tree in panic. What could terrify them so much? The next three bodies were found scattered a few hundred meters from the first discovery. One of them had suffered a fractured skull, this despite no evidence of a struggle. It took the spring thaw, two months later, to enable the rescue team to find the rest of the victims. The last four skiers were found buried in a thick layer of ice and snow. Their autopsies led to even more bizarre findings. All of the bodies had severe internal injuries caused by an undetermined force, similar to that of a serious car accident. No external damage nor bruises were visible, besides a tongue ripped from one victim's mouth and a strange orange skin color. Much speculation arose from these puzzling events. Such theories included attack from the local tribesmen from an avalanche or animals. Each theory, however, only served to create more questions. The truth behind this tragic course of events remains unexplained to this day. What really happened? Maybe the answer still waits to be discovered, deep under the snow. Well, they certainly just dropped us right in, didn't they? They look around here. Nothing... Nothing immediately apparent. We have a village of some kind down here. I'm just gonna assume we want to move forward first. So how am I going to investigate the deaths of these skiers exactly? What's my involvement here? Hello, freaky door. Can I move through this? I can't interact with this as far as I can tell. Alright, we have a sprint. Good to know. Can I get on the train? Nope, that's the conjunction between train tracks. So there's definitely an exploration-oriented game. So really, we just have to start pressing on. Let's see what we find here. And if any of it can be tied to what happened to, the, to these people that died in the snow. I wonder how long I can play for before I just die in the snow. <laughs> kind of the first thing that comes to mind is can I just die the same way? Can I not interact with this gate at all? I can kind of zoom in on it. Which is an interesting thing to, get, to give me access to. Alright, let's, let's follow the path. Just a, just an empty patch. I guess I'm just gonna wander off into the forest. Seems like the place to go right about now. Got mysterious cabin of the local, the local loner that likes to hang out in the middle of nowhere. Needs to get, needs to have a good 50 feet between him and all of his neighbors in order to feel safe. And he's got a fence, which is an impenetrable barrier for me, apparently, so... I guess I'm not paying him a visit today. Alright, the storm's picking up. 
That's not a great sign for me. Left or right, let's go left. Arbitrary decision making at work here. So we're back at the train tracks. Should I just follow the train tracks out of town? I, I get the feeling this game doesn't take place in the town since it's about people who died in the wilderness from unknown reasons. I wonder what kind of, I wonder what we're hinting at here. Is it something supernatural? Like, was a, is it like a haunted mountain? Is there, one of the first things that comes to mind for me is like some, some version of a werewolf. But that's because I'll, I just think werewolves are cool. <laughs> and I've been playing a lot of games with them lately. Oh yeah. That's gonna be what this game is. It's gonna be a game where I'm alone with my thoughts. Slowly driving me crazy. As we explore. Kind of as there's like a there's you go out of focus when you zoom in and out, almost like you're zooming a camera. Just trees, and emptiness. All right. I thought I'd let you guys be alone with the ambience for a moment there. Oh. Are you coming to me? Oh. Footsteps. Glowy footsteps and Sean Bean talking to me. You have anything else to say, Sean? Are you gonna die in this game too? Just like every other game? Oh, well, this is fucking creepy. Do I have to? I mean, I could I could just uninstall. That's that's an option. What is happening? Oh. In the end, the only thing I saw was a flash. An insufferable burning light. The pain ripping apart my body. I felt it tearing out of my soul. After a while, I was nobody. Nothing. The light went out and I vanished into overwhelming darkness. I welcomed the end with delight. Well... Can't exactly see anything right now. Definitely get the feeling somebody's gonna come out after me. Maybe if... Does this function as a squint? Nope. Oh no, I've made a mistake, haven't I? I was like, I'll rotate, I hear a weird... I hear like a chime effect in my ears. I thought maybe I could hear it and go towards it. But it didn't really help and now I'm... Not sure if I'm even going in the same direction anymore. Oh well, I'll just sprint into the cold, that's the safe thing to do. I'm blind. This is like... This is like the worst part of Dark Souls 2. Oh, there's... there we go. That's the tent. I'm about to find all the dead hikers. There's someone still in there? There's a light. I am right behind you. I don't don't say that. Ever tried to hold on to your humanity when others convince you of being no more than a subject, an object which they can bend to their will? When they told you that you were a monster that deserved punishment, when you could really not remember your sins, when they took away your loved ones, leaving you to rot in the dark. The problem is, it's in their darkness. Got a nice order of creepy. Oh, the steps are going away? I guess I better follow them. Alright, buy a tent that everyone died in, probably. S a skiing pole? Oh, oh, they're running away from me. The steps are going away. 
There's a creepy glowing red thing. Oh no, I lost them. Running in the left stick it, with left stick is tiring. Adjust the pace to the surrounding conditions so you don't exhaust your organism. Your organism, that's a weird way to put it. Before setting off for a longer journey, rest in the camp and set a goal for a safe route. You can focus left with L2 on any object for a better look at it. Lighting your way with the flashlight, you become more visible. Uh, observe the environment carefully for better navigation and with help of the ma Y map and compass R2. Uh, barely accessible rocky notches may lead to interesting places and shortcuts. To gain access to them, you will sometimes have to squeeze through with B, low-lying obstacles, or jump off them. Any other things around here? Articles? No articles. Reports? Diary and logbook? Nope. Okay, so, left stick runs but is tiring. We apparently have to worry about that as a mechanic. L2 focuses on something. X is, is a flashlight. Map is Y. R2 is compass. Alright, navigational game. We have to be careful about this then. Almost like we're playing... Okay. Is that my camp? That appears to be my, my camp. Right over here. So right now... We have to be careful about what direction I go in so I don't get lost. Let's see. Oh, I can lower the map while moving around. That's interesting. But I, need to, I need to decide what direction I want to go in. Let's see. It's a little rough. I, I assume that the, the red on the compass is north. So this is north. So we're currently going south from the map, the camp, about. I have to be a little careful here. That's exactly... I'm looking straight at the map, at the ca camp. That's south. So we're going down towards this lower area, it looks like. I hope. I hope I'm not messing... I I'm not, hope, I'm not, hope I'm not reading Russian compasses backwards. We'll look for the- we'll just look for a path ahead of us. And see, if, see if we can avoid getting lost here. I'm sure I'll be fine, or I'll die horribly, I don't know. Let's go as south as we can. And attempt to not get lost. What is that thing? Can't- I can't focus clearly on it. Alright, we don't wanna- we don't wanna run too much. Oh! Hi, creepy red stuff. What is this? S Do I touch it? This seems like a bad idea. I set out the moment I heard about the incident. I was in the area, so I reported to the unit myself to be automatically assigned to the case. I arrived at Vishai on February the 19th, a couple of days before the Institute's rescue group. While waiting for them, I started asking around to see if anyone from among the locals knew anything about the incident. One of them said he had a hunting cabin in the search region and knew the area very well. I decided to use him as a guide. When the rescue team had finally arrived, I explained to them what the unit's role was in this mission and that all discoveries or observations should be brought to my attention before anyone else's. We established priorities, checked the equipment, and set off right away. It was not until February the 26th we found the tent that I believe belonged to the students. Initial findings show that the people in the tent cut its side wall and for some reason tried to escape from it in panic. The tracks in the snow led to a forest a kilometre and a half away. But the trail went cold after 500 metres and we had to carefully search the entire area. This was not a place of any average incident. We had shivers crawling all over our bodies because of the atmosphere surrounding us. I was convinced that something more than just an accident had occurred here. I had the feeling we were dealing with something unnatural. I'm frankly surprised. Uh, bad touch. Let's back up from this a little bit. Oh, okay. Whoa. Okay. All the giant pillars were levitating. That's pretty freaky. Uh... Look at the map. Oh! Looks like this little spot's on the map. 
That definitely that that clarifies that uh, that red is definitely north on this thing then, because that being marked gives me an idea of where I'm going. Wow. Okay. That's not what I was I was I wasn't really expecting that to happen. I'm I'm surprised they were able to find tracks in the snow here though. It's, just, it's I, I imagine it's in this kind of condition a lot of the time. So uh, they, they they took a week to find the camp. So how how were they even, how were there even tracks to follow? I guess this is, this looks like it's kind of a funnel shaped area. So I can just go through there, or actually there might be a slope over here I can follow. If I check to see if there's a slope of some kind, I might be able to find the weird red thing up there, which I'm sure is entirely safe to check out. And it's of course creeping in the back of my head this whole time that. This game mentions it has some horror element. And I'm definitely feeling alone. Let's see. Obvious question is how far do I think I can make it in this kind of wilderness setting without dying out? Because we've suggested a stamina system of some kind. So I'm, I, may, I may need to rest fairly periodically. Is there going to be a red- is there going to be some kind of... Oh, no. That's wolf noises. What do I do if a wolf attacks me? Can I even fight it? Can I- can I even outrun it? Uh, probably not. This will be a very short version of Liam Neeson's The Grey. Let's see, I was headed down here because I thought there was a red- oh, there's the red mark. What is that thing? Let's look around this clearing. Is there a wolf? I don't see one yet. We're still heading roughly south. I'm not going in a straight line, but the, the terrain doesn't really allow that. I think I'm getting closer to the wolf. Which is not the best outcome for me. Oh god. Can I get, can I get across this or is it going to fall on me? Oh! Look at that. Looks like someone might live over there. There's a fire. Is that the is that the fire that they said? Let's see. Can I make a cross here? That might be the fire of the uh, campers that they mentioned. Let's see. How far away does that look to, to me? Well, that's not too far away. I might I might be able to make it to that, or maybe I should go to the fire. Oh. Fifty four north, fifty seven east. Let's see. 54 north, 57 east. 54 north, 57 east. Uh, that's probably just where I am right now. Judging from its general, the general path I'm looking at. There's a good chance that that's just where I'm standing right now. And that that's just telling me where I am. Huh. I could pursue the red mark or I could go towards the fire, perhaps. I don't, no, I don't know. I think I'd have to go across that tree to get to the fire. Let's maybe think about that later. I'm curious about this weird red mark. And I have no idea what I'm getting myself into here. I will make a note that this game doesn't seem particularly well organ uh, optimized. Uh, no matter what I do with the settings, you can't really fix the frame rate. <laughs> and uh, this, this game can run... Like, I don't have troubles running other games, really. It's probably the excessive amounts of part particle effects. Is that a fire? A fire to keep warm? Oh, a camp. Minder attack or something? Oh, there we go. There's my new camp. Oh. The mark was over there. It, it was saying to go there, but I appear to be here. So I need to backtrack. Probably across that other tree. Am I able to camp? No, just I, I can just put it on my map. Can I use the fire? Or this bed roll? Fire doesn't seem to do anything. Huh. Let's see, if I head... That's north, so this should be east? If I head east from this camp... Yeah. Okay, this, uh... The controls for this thing are a little weird for me. Alright. If I head roughly east, that'll head me in the direction-ish of where that was headed, maybe. 
where those in with the where that that sign told me I should probably go to. We'll see if that works. Maybe I don't want my light out. It says it makes me more visible. And we don't know what that entails in this game yet. There could be something bad. Oh, that's a dead end. Alright. It's not going to take me anywhere. Let's see. So we have a camp established. I know how to get here. So the, the question is, do I keep pushing forward or do I check back on that other light? I saw another camp in the other direction. Let's go this way. I can always check back there later. I want to see how far I can make it in one run. I don't know how what kind of penalty this game might give me for over time. Like if you just straight up die or not. Oh, it's a it's a tower. Okay. So it's not just a mysterious floating light, it's a straight up it's some sort of tower. Is it a radio tower? Oh, noises. We have some sort of destroyed structures around here. Alright. What do we have? Anyone anyone want a party? Guys? Someone around here? Oh. We're getting a very unpleasant build up in the audio. Let's see, I can kind of walk in from here. Is that a light? No nasty surprises yet, and I think I saw a light over here that it could be another camping location. Oh, there we go. That looks that looks like a thing. If I can, if I can approach it successfully. Uh, let's see. Can I crouch under here? Not quite. I guess we got a bit of a labyrinth to uh, navigate then, because you can't jump. So unless you can crouch under something, you don't you don't really get away with it. There we go. Can I really not get past this thing? Okay, the, l the lack of jumps getting a little silly now. Can I walk up this thing now? Let's see here. There's got to be an a, way a way to approach the light. Well, now we're in the open again. If something, if something nasty was going to happen to me, this would be the time. Or as I go, or as I hop off, I hop off this thing. That'd be a good time to do something to me. Oh, that's not a light. That was a body. That was some kind of body. It wasn't even a like a. That wasn't a uh, campsite. I see. There's something shiny over here. What are you? Oh, Sevesk is a closed city in Tomsk Oblast, Russia. Located 15 kilometers, or 9.3 miles, northwest of Tomsk, on the right bank of the Tom River, and is in the hands of Rosatom, the Federal Atomic Energy Com Agency. Founded in 1949, it was known as Pieti Poktovi, the fifth postal. Town status was granted to it in 1956. It comprises several nuclear reactors and chemical plants for separation, enrichment, and reprocessing of uranium and plutonium. The headquarters of the Russian Research Unit for Natural Phenomena, until 1991 called the Soviet Research Unit. The unit's activities concern research on occurring natural disasters in Russia. Huh. So there's some sort of, there's some sort of nuclear research in the area. It's getting darker in here. Maybe, maybe inside will be a shelter. Those, those are some nasty wind effects. It's like when you open a window in a car. Well, don't expect to get much use out of the uh, compass any, at this point. I heard someone running around and it's something slam. What are we coming up on? Oh, that's just that's just a light reflection. Nothing there. How did going indoors make the frame rate wor worse? That's weird. Yeah, this game seems really terribly optimized, unfortunately. Oh. Well. You're. Oh, I'm dead. Okay. <laughs>